coming up. The next speaker, known him for a long time, chewed a lot of dirt together, Brigadier General Randall Simmons. Ooh. That music is awesome. Ooh. Hey, after I hear my wife's comments, I'm very sensitive to time. So, uh, Reg, keep me on time, but I don't want to be late for sure. Um, but it's a pleasure to be here today, talk to you on a subject as important as leadership. Uh, when Reg first asked me to, to talk about this, I said, well, I'm not going to pre prepare uh, remarks. I'm just going to create an outline. And after uh, five pages of outline, I figured I needed to stop. So um, you probably will need to, uh, to provide the hook before it's over with. But um, before I get started, I just want to thank everybody in here, um, Army and Air, past and present, uh, for your service and for your leadership. Um, quick show of hands, how many lieutenants? We got any lieutenants in here? All right, so there are a few I figured there would be. Um, so part of what I want to convey is that we're going to need your leadership for your entire career. Um, the threats that face our nation are real. The deployments will be here probably uh, until you retire. Um, so one thing that I'll, I'll hit with in the beginning, how many have uh, read a book on leadership? Everybody, right? We've all read a book. And there are many out there, uh, from the business world to the sports world, Tony Dungy, Zig Ziglar, um, all of those types. But when it comes to our profession, we need to focus on um, the military. Uh, leadership uh, techniques and attributes that would uh, maximize profits or reduce loss in the business world or win championships in the sports world um, will not necessarily ensure success in the military. So one thing that I, I, I tend to always go back to are Army regulations. The good thing about the Army is that if they want you to do something, they write a regulation on it. So um, ADP 6-22 is like the Cliff Notes version of FM 6-22, which is much longer. ADP 6-22 is only about nine pages, and it outlines everything the Army expects our leaders to do. Who? Um, the nature of military operations is a human endeavor. This is a human business. That's why leadership is so important. In the civilian world, maximizing profits and reducing loss is different. In the military, we're asking our soldiers, and we're providing the leadership for them to kick in doors and shoot bad guys in the face. Um, we're asking them to lead combat patrols down routes that are known for uh, being laden with IEDs. That takes a tremendous amount of leadership. Um, I'll give you the Army definition of leadership, and I'll come back and talk about an, an aspect of it before I close. Leadership is the process of influencing, that's a key word, people by providing purpose, direction, and motivation to accomplish the mission or to improve the organization. Also had a uh, pre-command course instructor one time say that leadership is getting people to do what you want them to do without telling them to do it. Um, before I go into that much more, I want to talk about a couple of uh, aspects of leadership and, uh, that have been very important to me. One of the most important foundations of it is trust, both individual and for organizational. Um, how many people throughout their career have considered positions that they want um, or promotions? And how many times have you gotten news contrary uh, to what you want to hear? Maybe you wanted a position or you wanted a promotion and it didn't necessarily happen. Um, it happened for me many times. Um, I can remember being uh, a, platoon or a, a platoon leader in Bravo Battery, uh, first to 118th, many years ago. Uh, I want to say it was probably summer of 94. Uh, we were preparing to go to NTC and we were going to change from doing platoon operations to battery operations. The big difference is uh, and platoon operations, you have two platoon leaders and two fire direction officers. In battery operations, you have one executive officer and one fire direction officer. Well, I wanted to be that executive officer when we transitioned. Had a meeting with the battalion commander, told him that's what I wanted to do. When the slating came out, I was not. I was still going to stay as the fire direction officer. Um, but there was a level of trust in the organization where I accepted that and rucked up and, and moved on. As luck would have it, the guy that was selected to be the, uh, the XO moved on, didn't make it, kind of washed out, 
And um, I became the XO. Rob Evans, who I think is here, became the XO or the uh, FDO, and we went on the NTC and, and rocked it. Um, that kind of stuff, when you get news that you don't want to hear, you ha just have to take it in stride. We're not always going to get what we want. That is a, a, a key part to me of leadership. The, an important aspect of it, and probably um, the number one imperative of leadership is to be a good follower. Um, we all have a boss. Everybody has a boss. And as General Cardin used to say, know your boss, find out what he or she wants, and give it to him. And that'll ensure your future success. Um, same with promotions. Um, we've, we probably always feel like we should be promoted um, at certain times or, or seek certain assignments. I can remember again in the, in the first and 118th, uh, serving as an AO and as assistant three, uh, command change was coming. There was going to be an S3 vacancy, and the logic had it. I would be the S3 as the AO, and, and we were getting ready for deployment. Uh, when the FGAC results were released, I was not selected. Uh, someone from the 214th, who I'd never heard of, was selected to be the S3. And um, again, I was like, man, what am I missing? You know, this is not, not good. This isn't what we were expecting. But faith in the organization, trust in those around me. Um, I can remember many of you know General Reddick, who's famous for saying soldiers matter. He coined that term way back when. Uh, he, he knew that... Uh, I probably wouldn't be happy with that. And he came to state or Savannah and, and talked to me and explained, hey, the organization's got you. Well, three months later, I was selected to be the XO, and we formed a good team and had a successful deployment. So trust um, in the organization and those around you, and always trust that your leaders have a plan for you, okay? Um, there's a couple other things. I got the five-minute warning I wanted to mention. I'll talk about a couple of things that kind of plague our organization right now. Um, plague the Army. We read about it in Army Times from time to time. Height and weight, PT failure, uh, flags, AWOLs, or something that we're addressing in the Army Guard right now. Um, a lot of times, folks that are misguided in leadership think that it's all about them. And we've heard General Cardin say many times that this profession that we are in is not an IME uh, organization, it's an us and we organization. Um, leadership is about being a servant to those that you lead and setting an example. But it's more than just an example. If you go out and you can run a 13 minute, two mile PT time uh, and you can max it, that's great for you individually. But if you have to separate hundreds of soldiers because they failed to meet the standard, then um, there's a problem there. Um, if you think a soldier is more likely to follow you because you're a nice guy or a nice gal, uh, or because you present a strict military appearance or max APFT rather than because um, you show that you're willing and able to take care of them under your charge, uh, you may have lost your way. Um, you know, in terms of height and weight and PT, we put a lot of emphasis on that. That's kind of a foundational thing uh, in the military. Uh, one of the observations we recently received. Um, from our career management board team. Three colonels from out of state came in and each of them had the same observation of our officer corps. And that was that we had probably the most fit uh, officer corps that they had seen and um, with current passing APFTs. So that's a tribute to not anybody up here, but your leadership and, um, and, and guidance. All right, we're just about done here. Let's see. Um now I see what you mean, Jesse, with uh... <laughs> the last thing I'll say is don't be afraid to lead, I'm kind of bouncing around. That's probably the most important thing if you could take away from this. Soldiers expect it. Soldiers want it. Um, it's not always easy. There, there are certain topics that uh, sometimes we don't want to address for whatever reason. But it goes back to the initial, when I read the definition of leadership, as influencing is a key word. So let's talk, uh, Marshall brought it up earlier with Nagas membership, Naga membership, okay? Boy, this is where I make the Jags uh, nervous, so I'm not going to look at you guys. Uh, <laughs> you know, it is an expectation that our officer corps join the associations. This association exists to support um, you, our families, and what we do, our profession. 
Um, as influencing. It's not undue command influence. Don't be afraid to talk about topics. If you're in a leadership position, if you're in a command position, own it. Talk about it. Tell people what you expect. Now, I will tell you that we never take a list of people that choose not to be a member into a boardroom when we uh, make personnel assignments or command slatings or anything like that. Um, but it's about leadership. It's a function of what we do to our organization. And um, it's important to be a member. Who? <laughs> we look to turn that slide from red to green going forward. Um, I could go on and on. I appreciate, again, all of your service and all of your leadership. Like I said in the beginning, um, we're going to need everyone's leadership in here from the lowest, uh, uh, most junior enlisted soldier to our youngest uh, lieutenant for the foreseeable future. Your leadership is, uh, is important not only at home uh, during hurricanes and other national disasters, uh, natural disasters, but downrange as we uh, do the will of our country. Who? Thank you. Thank you, General Simmons. I appreciate you. Hey, this is something new that we want to do, and uh, a good thing about being here at the conference is you have a chance to engage your senior leaders and continue these conversations after this, uh, after their presentations.